Good to be in the house of worship. Amen. Good to be among God's people and to see all of you with us this morning. If you're visiting, let me say we're so glad to have you with us. Amen. You know our little motto around here, after two times, you're no longer a visitor. We just accept you as part of our family here at the church. Amen. And we appreciate you being here with us. Amen. Have your Bibles, if you would, this Sunday morning. Go with me to the book of Nehemiah. One of these Old Testament prophets, minor prophets, they would call them Nehemiah. Chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. I'd like to read verses 17 through 20 this morning. I pray that you will be blessed of the Lord this morning. Amen. Through the preaching of the gospel. Amen. You know, the Lord chose this. Amen. Through the foolishness of preaching. Amen. To confound the wise. Verse 17 of Nehemiah chapter 2. Then said I unto them... You see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the land of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's word that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sanballat the Hornite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them, I like the answer that Nehemiah gave. And said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. In Matthew 19 and 26, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. How many believe that this morning? Father God, we honor you this morning. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Once again, for this great privilege, for this great opportunity that you've given us this Sunday morning, Lord, to come into your house, to gather together, Lord, for a time of worship, for a time of calling upon the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I ask you this morning, Lord, to lead us, to guide us, and to direct us. Lord, take control of our mind, our thoughts, our body, our intellect. Take charge of all things this Sunday morning, Lord. That when everything is said and done, Lord, it will be for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. Holy Ghost, use us now as a vessel and a tool. In the hand of the carpenter. Let us be a blessing to your people this morning Lord. And I pray today Father God that through the preaching of the gospel. That lives would be changed this Sunday morning. That men and women would realize as our brother taught in the Sunday school class. That they can be saved this morning. Regardless of who they are. Regardless of where they came from. That all men can be saved this morning and come to the saving grace and the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord, when it's all said and done, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Shake a few hands and tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You pray for us this morning. Amen. If I had a subject to preach on, it would be the topic this morning. Can't stop now. Can't stop now. What this church needs is blank. 
I can't believe our government officials. If I were there, I would blame. You can fill in the blanks any way you want to. Our schools are really in bad shape. Someone ought to do something. Gripers, complainers, self-proclaimed prophets, and armchair quarterbacks abound. You know what armchair quarterbacks is? We'll tell you later. It's easy to analyze or scrutinize and talk about all the problems in the world. But you see, we really need people who will not just discuss a situation, but will do something about it. You see, Nehemiah saw a problem and was distressed about it. Instead of wallowing in self-pity and grief, he took action. Nehemiah knew that God wanted him to motivate the Jewish people to rebuild Jerusalem's walls. So he left, listen, a responsible position in the Persian government to do what God wanted. Nehemiah knew God could use his talents to get the job done. From the moment he arrived in Jerusalem, everyone knew he was in charge. He would organize, manage, supervise, encourage, met opposition, confronted injustice, but kept going until the walls were built. You see, Nehemiah was a man of action. He didn't just sit around and talk about the problem, but he had some unction about him. Nehemiah was distressed when he looked to Jerusalem and heard about the walls and the reports that he was receiving that the walls of Jerusalem had been torn down. You see, the temple had been rebuilt in 516 B.C. But yet 70 years after the temple was erected, the walls of Jerusalem still lay in ruins. You see, the walls were for their protection. They needed those walls. Not only for protection, but they were to beautify the city. To keep it safe from intruders. But we see here this Sunday morning, Nehemiah was disturbed because of the walls of Jerusalem had been torn down and for 70 years they just lay desolate. And he wanted to do something about the city of Jerusalem. Can I ask you this Sunday morning, when we see problems and we see situations, what do we do about them? Do we get on the phone and gossip about them? Come on, I'm just giving you a little background this morning. Do we say, well, I believe I'll find another church that ain't got problems? God bless you. If you find it and you attend it, you'll be the first problem. Amen, as long as there's humans in the world, we'll be problems, right? I said, we... Come on, y'all stay with me this morning. Nehemiah wanted to go and do something for his country, for his people. So he goes to the king in whom he works for, King Artaxerus. And he asked the king and told the king the situation and the king granted him permission to go back to Jerusalem. Not only granted him permission, but gave him authority. Gave him power. Provided the things that he needed. In order to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So I get to chapter 2. Nehemiah arrives in Jerusalem. He begins to take a survey of the city through the night. And then in verse 17 he begins to call the people together. And he begins to talk to them and say, listen, this is what I want to do. I want to rebuild the walls of this city. I want to get Jerusalem back like it ought to be. But how many knows this Sunday morning, before I get too far into the message, when you want to do good, evil is always present. Are you with me, church? 
Anytime you desire to do something good. You see, we started a, a 21 day prayer and fast. January the 5th. And some of you teamed up to fast along with your pastor. Some of you praying whatever you decide to do between you and the Lord. I, I left that between you and the Lord. I know it hasn't been that many days. What, 11, 12 days? Somewhere around that area now. I'm beginning to be somewhat weak. So are some of you. But I'm willing to continue because of what my Lord done for me. What we're doing for these 21 days is not a drop in the bucket to what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us at the cross of Calvary. When he bled, he died, and he gave up the ghost that you and I could have a right to the tree of life. So when you get hungry, when you get weak, Say, Lord, I'm doing this for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. And I can't stop now. Nehemiah realized that in doing this, he would face opposition. Anytime you do something good for God, the devil wants to keep us from doing it. And he'll bring every opposition that he can. I'm taking my time right now. He'll bring every opposition... To try to keep us from doing what we need to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this is a brand new year, 2017. We're in the 15th day of, the, of January of this year. How many has already met with opposition? Come on, be honest. Just wave your hand a little bit. You've already met with problems. You've already met with situations and circumstances. But you realize in your spirit, preacher, I can't stop now. I, I, can I tell somebody this morning, we're too close to going home now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In order to stop now, I just can't stop. I've got my man made up. i got my foot on the rock. I'm looking under Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Because I can't stop now. I've got a work to do. You've got a work to do, ma'am and sir. You've got a work that God has called you to do. And there's no time for hesitation. There's no time for distress. There's no time to stop. Man, I got to keep going. I got to keep looking to Jesus. I don't have time to look back. I don't have time to play games. Nehemiah said, I've got a wall to build. Look at Nehemiah just a minute if we could. Nehemiah said, listen, we got a work to do. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Let us rise up and build now. The devil's listening. Huh? And he names two of his cohorts. Sanballat, the Hornonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian heard it, found out what Nehemiah wanted to do, and they laughed us to scorn, despised us, and said, What is this thing you're going to do? They even went a little bit later on in the chapter and said, Man, if you build this wall and a fox go up on it, it'll fall down. Huh? In other words, they said, Man, you can't do this, Nehemiah. There used to be an old show out some many years ago when I was a young boy called Smokey and the Bandit. Huh? I used to have a Camaro, T-top, wheels, and all that stuff just like old Smokey drove. Huh? Drove at many parades, all that kind of stuff, you know, nice, nice vehicle. But he had a saying in there. He said, we're going to do what they say can't be done. We got a long ways to go in a short time to get there. I'm eastbound. Just watch old bandit run. Y'all remember that? Come on. Y'all older than I am. Amen. Oh, smoking the bandit say, we're going to do what they say can't be done. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Let's follow Nehemiah just a little bit this morning. 
Nehemiah begins to do a work for the Lord. Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, all of these men begin to come against him. He begins to hear the accusations that's made against him. Later on we'll find out they even threatened him. But Nehemiah, the Bible said, had a mind to work. Had a vision from God. And he got a group of people together. And he began to encourage them in the Lord. How many need encouraging every once in a while in the Lord? You're here this morning. Some of you might need encouraging this morning. I do. Amen. And, and Nehemiah needed, these people needed some encouragement. So Nehemiah is God's man. And, and Nehemiah begins to encourage the people, Brother Hunter. And he begins to tell them, listen, we can rebuild the wall. But listen, it will not be without opposition. It will not be without interference from the devil of hell. You see, if I'd have listened to the devil this morning, I'd have stayed home. Would you have stayed home and not come to the house of God? But I had a mind, and my mind was made up. My foot's on the rock and I'm looking to Jesus. I know the author and the finisher of my faith. I know my Redeemer liveth and is alive forevermore. I wish I had about 10 people in here that would just stand up right now and say, I know him, preacher. I serve him. I'm committed to him. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my Redeemer. He's the author of me. He's the finisher of my faith. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He's the beginning in my life. He's the ending in my life. I know him as the rose of Sharon. I know him as the lily in the valley. I know him as the bride and the morning star. I know him as the judge of all the earth. He is the great God of glory. Do I have anybody that knows him in the Chadburn church this morning? What are you telling me, Pastor? I'm telling you this one. Nehemiah knew what he had to do. Brothers and sisters, listen to me this morning. You know the work that we've got to do this year. The work is great. People are dying around us every single day, it seems like. Huh? I thought about Sister Lisa this past week. 52 years old. Died on her birthday. Fell dead. Went out into eternity. You see, we never know where death is. It's once appointed unto man to die, and after death will come the judgment. We don't know where death is this morning, children of God. So we need to work with all of our might, with all of our strength, and with all of our power in the year of 2017. What are you telling me, preacher? We've got a great work to do, and the devil's trying to stop each and every one of us. And he does it through many different ways. Sometimes it's through our family. Are you with me? Sometimes it's through our job. Huh? Sometimes it's through our children. Huh? Sometimes it's through our health. Come on, y'all stay with me this morning. There's a lot of ways that the devil can bring opposition to us, amen, and try to get us to stop what God has called us to do. But you see, Sister Shirley, I found out something about the devil, amen. I, I, I got a little knowledge about me, you know. I, I told somebody this week about wisdom, you know. I said the Bible talks about a hoary head. That's a man of gray hair, you know. I said I got a plenty of it, amen. Hallelujah. But what I'm telling you is this morning, is I've been Come aware of the devil's tactics, brother Hun. Amen. I, I've been around a little while. Amen. I've been around the fence a little bit, and I found out something that the devil is sly, the devil is cunning, the devil is crafty, and he used different devices and different techniques, brother Jamie, to try to get me to stop. But after a little while, I wise up to the devil's enemy. I wise up to his tactics, and I realize it's nothing but an enemy from hell that's trying to stop me and I say no sir I'm not going to stop I'm too far now the game is just about over I'm about come to the end of life's way I said like the fellow said I can see the light at the end of the tunnel I've just about run my last mile home and there's a great celebration awaiting around God's throne do I have anybody Whoa! that knows Jesus Christ that's been born again that's been washed in the blood that knows the devil's tactics 
place but you got a made up mind and you're willing to go all the way regardless of the cost we need somebody with a made up mind this morning that'll say I can't stop now preacher I gotta keep running Nehemiah knew what he had to do. I'm not lost. I know where I'm at this morning. But I look around in the house of God today. And I see a lot of folks that have quit. That have fell along the wayside. Has given up the faith. Thrown in the towel and said, I can't do it anymore, preacher. Listen, I'm too close to going home now. The king is soon coming. I believe the father's about to look at his son shortly and say, go get my children now and bring them home. Huh? Nehemiah said, I can't stop. He heard the threats from the devil's cohorts. And when they asked him, what are you going to do? He said, listen, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, he thought maybe he was going to rebel against the king. He didn't know that the king had already given him authority and given him power and given him the right necessary stuff that he needed. He didn't tell him the king sent me here to build the wall. No, that ain't what Nehemiah did. He said, listen, I'm going to tell you something. The God that gave me a vision of the wall being rebuilt is the same God that sent me here. I want to tell the devil of hell the reason I'm in Chadbourne, North Carolina it's because God Almighty sent me here 20 years ago and if I'd have listened to the devil I'd have been run off a long time ago but I've come by to tell you I'm not easily persuaded when it comes down to the enemy I'm a hard headed preacher and I got my mind made up and I'm going to finish the race I'm going to keep right on running I said I'm going to keep right on running do I have anybody that will run with me this morning I'm going to keep right on running because I know that I know that I know uh, that just in a little while uh, I'm going to see my maker. Uh, I'm, man, I feel like preaching. Uh, I'm going to see my redeemer uh, and I'm going to build out for him uh, and cry holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts uh, which was and is uh, and is to come and shall be forevermore. Give him a hand clap of praise. Can't stop now. Got my mind made up now. Huh? Got to finish what I started. You see, we got in the church nowadays, we got a lot of procrastinators. They talk a good talk, but they can't walk the walk. They put on the boxing gloves and don't even know how to fight. Are you with me? Huh? They look good. They even smell pretty good. I'm telling you, they don't know how to fight. Huh? That's why I like old Rocky. Y'all know I'm a Rocky fan. South Paul. Old Rocky, his first match, he didn't know how to fight. He jumped around like a frog. Didn't even know how to move, couldn't dance. Come on. Y'all with me? But he had a bad left hook. And he had a made up mind. That he was going to go the distance. He said, I may not beat him. But I'm going to go the distance with him. Huh? And when it was over, the opponent grabbed him and hugged him around the neck. Said, there won't be no rematch. What are you telling me, preacher? He knew from the get-go he was the underdog. Stay with me. According to this world, you and I are the underdogs. We are a minority, aren't we not? Huh? The world's the majority out there today, folks. And they talk about us. I heard what the preacher said when he walked up on the platform this morning to put the little thing back up up here. He said, listen, people talk about our God. And we say, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's right. 
When are we going to get a backbone and stand up and say, wait a minute, that's my God you're talking about. That's my God you're defaming. That's my God, and I don't have to hear your trash. Hello? Boy, y'all looking at me funny now. I, I ain't fell off the turnip truck. I know right where I'm at. Huh? But we'll stay right there and we'll listen to that garbage. Amen. And then we, we try to act like we're Christians and all of this kind of stuff. Listen, it's time you make up your mind. Either you're in with God or you're out with God. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. You need to make up your mind right now that that this is what I'm going to do I'm a child of the God I'm glad to be a Christian and I stand for holiness I stand for righteousness I stand for the truth of this word and I will not back down I can't stop now threaten Nehemiah all you want to talk about him despise him but he wouldn't stop building the wall you hear the threats from his enemies. I could take you on to chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. But he got everybody together. You can read all those chapters and find where I'm at today. But listen, in the process of building the wall, how many knows that the first time the enemy threatens you and you don't stop, he just says, well, I'll just quit. I wish he would. I could probably have a head full of hair. But he never quits. If you make it through the first trial, he said, I'll try you again. Huh? Won't he, Brother Jeffrey? He'll try us again, won't he, buddy? But I heard the old songwriter said, I'm coming through the fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he, didn't, he, he couldn't get Nehemiah the first time. Next time he sent some more threats even greater to Nehemiah. Nehemiah's working on the wall. You know what he begins to do? He begins like we started on the 5th. He put some guys behind him praying. And holding a spear. And they stood over one while he got down on his knees. And he worked on the wall. The other stood over him with a sword and a spear. For his protection. And they were spread out on the wall. And Nehemiah read it in there. He said come together. We need to be closer together if the enemy attacks that's why he said in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and then he went on in chapter 6 and said put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand and having done all to stand stand therefore amen you know the story amen about having on the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness having your loins girt about with truth having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and he said above all this taking the shield of faith which is the B-I-B-L-E taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be man that's the strongest English word in the English language it shall he said you shall be overcomers you shall be victorious you shall defeat the enemy you shall walk on water you shall cast out devils you shall heal the my God almighty you shall in my name do great and mighty work saith the Lord God feel like preaching this morning I was weak when I started but he's giving me some strength now what are you telling me preacher Nehemiah said come on in boys in case the enemy attacks we're going to be ready from all sides of the enemy doing what we're doing right now the enemy is mad with us are you with me he don't want us to do what we're doing to set the stage and set the tone for this church year in 2017. Amen. He don't want us to fast. He don't want us to go without meals. How many found out that's hard to do? Huh? Some of you on the Daniel fast. You know how hard that is to do without meats, drinks, sweets, and bread. Just live off of vegetables. I'm so sick of vegetables, I don't want to see another vegetable. Say, what you living on, preacher? This H2O, that's good stuff right there. Mm. I'm telling you, God will sustain us. Huh? What you going to do, Nehemiah? We're going to build this wall. If you go on further in the chapters, you'll find out that wasn't the end of the devil's tricks. He began to send letters to Nehemiah on four different occasions 
trying to invite him to a banquet and all this kind of stuff. But you see, Nehemiah was a smart man. When they brought the letters to him, he said, listen, I don't have time for this. Can I just use my words? I ain't got time for the devil's foolishness. Amen, Brother Kim? I don't have time for the devil's foolishness. And Nehemiah wouldn't come down off the wall. And they kept sending letters to him and threats to him. Threatening his character. Even told him he just wanted to be king over the people. That's all he wanted to do. And set himself up as some kind of God. And Nehemiah declined that as well. No, Nehemiah had a vision for the work of God. As your pastor in 2017, I've got a vision for this church this year. That God's going to fill the house. Amen. He's going to bring them from the north, the east, the west, and the south. He's going to spend speak to them and they're going to come from every corner of the earth do you really believe that preacher I believe this Bible and I believe God's word amen if we'll stand true and not stop the work of God but keep right on building on the wall and not come down keep on teaching Sunday school if God's called you to teach keep on singing in the choir if God's called you to sing and you got to sing right by yourself honey just keep right on singing whatever God's called you to do do it as unto the Lord and do it with all your might and with with all your strength. I look at people nowadays on, on television. Some of you like me, I've been watching the football games, playing up to the Super Bowl, of course, and all that kind of stuff. You know them guys, I looked at them on last night, they're losing the game. And they know there's no way for them to win in the last four minutes of the game. There's no way they're going to win. Seahawks had took advantage of them. But you know what? They never quit running the ball. They fought down to the very end. Even though they knew they couldn't win it. But they said, we're going to let them know we've been here. Hello, are y'all with me? Huh? But you see, we're in a different sport this morning, you and I. It ain't about... Who runs the fastest. It ain't about who starts out and is the swiftest. It ain't about how much you do and how much you accomplish in life. The Bible said they that endure to the end. The same shall be saved. I feel your Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. I said they that endure to the end. What do you mean, Pastor? I heard the Apostle Paul said, I've been in pearls of my countrymen. I've been in pearls of waters of deep. I've been in pearls here. That word pearl means danger. Paul said everywhere I've been, I've been in danger. People have been out to kill me. People have been out to get rid of me. Can I give you a little surprise notice this morning? On alert right now at 12 o'clock, the devil is out to kill you. He's out to steal your family. He's out to destroy you. But Jesus said, I've come that you can my son no higher, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I've come that you shall be able to endure. I've come that you shall be more than a conqueror. You see, I'm an overcomer this morning. I'm victorious, Brother Kim. I'm not a loser. I'm not a quitter. I'm not down and out. I'm excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got on the whole armor of God, Sister Anna, and I know I'm in for a fight, and I'm ready this Sunday morning. Come on, devil, if you will. I got my tomahawkotaya. I'm ready now. I'm suited up. I'm ready for the battle, Brother Jamie, because I know that I know that if I'm going to win this battle, I've got to fight to the very end of this race. Rocky in the first, he knew he would never win, but he said, I just want to go the distance. Huh? Old team last night knew they weren't going to win. But they said, I'm going to hang in here to the very end. And I'm going to give it all I've got. Listen, when you can't, he can. When you won't, he will. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Mm. You know what I told my wife yesterday? We were sitting and talking. Tears began to fill up in my eyes. I said, honey. I got choked up. I said, I just want an old-fashioned, sin-killing, devil-chasing, 
revival to break out. Like I remember as a young boy coming up in church, I want to go back to those days. I said, I'm hungry for it. Sis, I want it more than I want my necessary food. I want it more than anything in my life. I'm tired of the norm, folks. I'm tired of the norm. I want to go back to those days, Brother Small, when I was a younger boy in the church, when people would fall out under the, I said fall out under the anointing, and the power of the Holy Ghost would be upon them, and their countenance would glow as they were slain in the Spirit. When did we sing that again in the 21st century church? You know what's happened? We, we've not done like Nehemiah. We've done the opposite of Nehemiah. We've come down off the wall. We've taken up the rudiments of the world. We begin to act like the the world, dress like the world, look like the world, do the things of the world and we've come down off of the wall and instead of standing on the wall and joining God's army, we step back and join the world of the enemy and because of that, we lost the power, we lost the anointing we lost the sacredness of God here in the 21st century say so, preacher this is hard preaching, well just hold on to your belt because it's going to get harder honey huh because I believe we're just that close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't have time to play games and pat you on the back and stay on the phone and beg you to come to church. I will not do it. My wife said this week, are you going to call so and so? I said, no ma'am, I'm not. I'm tired of begging grown up people. To come to church. Hey, listen, I'm not being mean and ugly this morning, but if you want to go to hell, goodbye, good riddance. I'm tired of sacrificing, laying on the altar, crying out for you, and you could care less. Boy, it's getting quiet now in the house, ain't it? Huh? I know some of you are gonna be mad with me now, but it's okay. Send me threatening letters if you like to, like Nehemiah. But I ain't going to quit. Amen. Can't quit now. No, I'm not going to keep begging people to come to church. I told my wife, I said, whoever comes, comes. Huh? When we get a vision like Nehemiah had, you won't have to beg people to come to church. Amen, preacher. Amen, preacher. Huh? They'll, they'll show up. Hallelujah. They'll be there before time to start church. They won't arrive a minute till 10. They won't come in at 20 after 10. They'll be here at 20 till 10. Hallelujah. They'll come early and say, Preacher, I said, My God, because I'm always over here early at the church. You know, and I'm, I mean, I'm surprised when somebody joins me early. Amen. Because when they join me early, I know something is up. Praise God. They either want to talk to me about somebody else or they want to tell me some good news. Amen. It's one or the other. It's either for the Lord or for the devil. You might as well tell the truth, Preacher. Tell it like it is, preacher. Hey, man. Hallelujah. I come by to tell you, I can't stop now. Listen, I done made up my mind, Brother Jeffrey. If my family don't want to go with me to heaven, if my husband and wife don't want to go with me, I'm talking to somebody here this Sunday morning. If you done made up your mind, if they don't want to go, it's not going to stop you. Why? Because you're going to keep right on going. You're going to keep right on marching to the beat of the drum because you want to see Jesus Christ, the one that died for you. Do I have anybody in here that's got your mind made up and you're not going to stop come on I'm talking to somebody in 2017 give him some worship give him some praise in the house of God I want you to be real bold with me just a minute Stay, keep standing keep standing keep standing I want you to be real bold I want you to tell the devil I'm on the wall and I ain't coming down. Now give him a shout of praise.
I hope you're not offended this morning, but if you are because of what I said, I still love you. And I'm still praying for you. I won't quit praying for you. But I'm just not going to beg you to come to church anymore. Huh? I love you. I appreciate you. But my, 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 my. Ah, I'm trying to be nice this morning, Brother Jody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been called to do what? Preach the gospel. To be instant in season and out of season. To reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Knowing that the time will come when men will be lovers of pleasures. More than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. He said from such turn away. Sometimes you got to dust off your feet. Amen. You got to get rid of that mess that's under your feet. And move on. Because God's got other people out there that want to hear the gospel. That want to know what the word of God says and they desire to know Jesus Christ in all of his power and his might and his salvation in 2016 I spent my wheels a lot begging people to come I ain't got time for that this year if there ain't nobody but a handful of us left my description is a pastor not a babysitter I don't have a box of pacifiers, but I got a B-I-B-L-E. If you want me to babysit you, hire your babysitter. You want somebody to cry at your funeral? Get you some mourners and pay them. That's what it did in the Old Testament, did it not? I ain't got time for that mess. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? Nehemiah, after receiving all these threats and doing everything that the enemy could to stop him, he kept right on building the wall. And you know what happened? He successfully completed the wall in 50 and 2 days. Read that in chapter 6. Huh? Now you're talking about a miracle. That's a miracle from God. They lived on the wall. They ate on the wall. They slept on the wall. Huh? They never left that wall, Sister Shirley. You're right. Because they had a work to do. And Nehemiah was their encourager. There even came a time when the, when the, when the high priest and the, and the great men of the city began to oppress the people that were working on the wall. They began to take their lands. They would take their children. They would destroy their families. And Nehemiah had a backbone. And he went to those men. And he said, what you're doing is wrong. It's time that we as preachers stand up and preach the book again. It's time, Sister Ann, that we be men and women of the cross. Huh? What about you this morning? Where are you at spiritually? Are you ready to quit? Or are you just being encouraged this morning to get on the whole armor of God and say, Preacher, I'm going to work. The Bible tells us to work while it's day. For night cometh when no man can work. Huh? Sister Kay, I'm just about home. Huh? I, I'm just about home now. Heaven sounding sweeter. All the time. <laughs> I'm not here to scold you this morning, but I'm here to tell you better make up your mind what you're going to do. You see, people do scoldings like Sister Denise in the school system. Scold those kids. You're not kids. You're not children. You're grown men and women of God. And you know what this book says. You know what you've got to do. So my question is, why aren't you doing it? Huh? This may be old backwoods preaching this morning. But if it takes me living right, is it not going to take you living right?
Huh? I heard a brother say last night, their pastor, you know, y'all know Dr. Lance. He's a dear friend of mine. We preach together and stuff. Runs Pastor's Mount Olive Church. This is his 20th year anniversary. And they'd done a program for him the other night. And the brother said, you know what, preacher? He said, sometimes too much is too much. He said, we started at 6 that afternoon. And at midnight, we were still sitting there. Look out, white folk. Huh? They weren't in a hurry to go home. And it goes for four days in a row. They don't give their preacher just one day. And I'm not advocating you do this for me. I'm not about that kind of stuff. But they appreciate their pastor. And for four days, they're going to do this kind of stuff. You know. And Dr. Lance knows I love him. I call him up, appreciate him, and tell him, you know, happy anniversary of this church and all that kind of stuff. But I ain't going there and said eight hours. I love you, Dr. Lance, and I'll send you an offer through the mail, but I ain't going to sit there that long. But I said all that to let you know this, folks. Ever how long it took Nehemiah 50 in two days, he didn't quit. He was willing to stay up there if it took a year and 52 days. Didn't make no difference to Nehemiah. He had a work to do. And he wouldn't come down. And can I tell you something? If you read chapter 10, 11, and 12 uh, in, in the book of Nehemiah, can I tell you what happened? Not only did they rebuild the wall, they rebuilt their spirits. Woo! Homes and marriages. All of it was rebuilt. See, it's not enough sometimes just to rebuild naturally. There are times you need to be rebuilt spiritually. Huh? I used to watch another old show that just came to mind called The Six Million Dollar Man. He said, we have the technology. We, we have the experience, if you will. We'll make him stronger than he's ever been. He'll run faster than he's ever run. Six million dollar man. Because huh? they knew they had a work for him to do. So they repaired him. They remade him. Jesus, listen to this. Jesus knew what we had to do. So he has rebuilt us. Woo! He has repaired us. And equipped us for the work that lies ahead. So, O oh man, thou art without excuse. Don't give me your excuses why you can't make this thing. Huh? Come on, somebody. Help me out. Huh? Don't tell me, preacher, I just can't do this anymore. You big wimp. You sucked up to the devil. Hello. Can I just be honest in my spirit this morning? It's a new year. I'm a new man. I'm excited for the Lord. Huh? You can make it, honey, if you want to make it. You can make it, sir, if you want to make it. Teenager, you can make it if you want to make it. I remember coming up at Scotland High School, I was one of the shortest people around that area. I don't know what happened. My brother's taller than I am. I'm just short. And I feel like the underdog a lot of times. I've always had to fight for everything. I knew how to fight physically in school, and I'd do that too. But one year I wanted to play football. My mom was against it because I was so little. But through the years, I had learned how to run really fast, getting away from them bigger boys. Huh? How you doing, Brother Terry? And so I wanted to try out for the football team. And I'd done everything. I hit the gym every day, pushing those leg extension machines, doing benches and curls and bicep work and back work. Man, I just wanted to be in the game. Just let me play, coach. Let me play. I killed myself till I made the football team. 
And then one day, it wasn't good enough to make the team. I said, I want to play. I want to play. I want to play, coach. You're so little, boy. I don't care. I want to play. I'm like Rudy. Thank you, Lord, for all these movies you're giving me. Y'all know that story of Rudy? Rudy wanted to play. He didn't care how bad he had to lay in ice. He had to lay in bags and water. He didn't care after practice. All he wanted to do was play in the game one time. That's all I wanted to do was just play. To put on a Scotland high school uniform and mount up against Richmond County. That was our rival team. Big 4A school. We were 2A school. But I got to the point I could play pretty decent. Brother Hunt. And they put me running back because they realized I could run the 440 pretty quick. Carry that football. I've been hit and turn all kind of flips up in the air. Hurting. But I stayed with it. Why? Because that's what I wanted to do. What's that all got to do with this preacher? If you want to make it to heaven, you can make it. You just got to make up your mind. And everything the devil throws against you, just jump over the hurdles. Get your mind made up. Get your priorities right. Can I be mean one more time? You can't make it staying at home when church is going on. Huh? I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to share my heart. It's 2017. Some of y'all got real slack on Sunday nights. Jobs come first and everything else is coming first. And you've got even slacker come Wednesday nights. Time for Bible study. Boys get quiet now. Them that's clapping is the faithful few. Huh? Preacher, boy, you didn't have to go there. You just cut me hard, didn't you? Yeah, and he can sew you up. Won't even leave no stitches. <laughs> Something's wrong. We want to get close to God, and we want to make it to the home field. I'm talking about heaven. But yet we ain't made up our mind enough to get out of the house when we got a headache and come to church. Huh? But I can call you on Monday morning and leave your message. You know why? Because you're at work. Boy, preach, preacher, boy, you're doing good now, boy. Huh? Oh, you lay out tonight, I got your number. And I'll call you tonight. If it takes me to midnight to call you, I'm going to call you anyhow. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us this Sunday morning, Nehemiah wouldn't stop no matter what happened. What kind of threats? They came against his deity or his, his character, if you will. They came against him personally, physically, in every way and tried to stop Nehemiah, but he wouldn't stop. And in the end, they had revival. Between Nehemiah and Ezra, they had revival in the land. And the people were brought back together. Why? Because of one man's vision. I'm not here to preach to myself after 20 years. I'm here to build this church and help you to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? I ask you this Sunday morning, do you have your mind made up really? Huh? I know some of you and some of you wanted a position higher than where you were at. You broke your back to get to that position. And then bless your heart, when you got it, you didn't want it. Amen. Because you found out money ain't everything. Huh? Solomon had everything. But if you read about him, he'll tell you one thing. Gain all this. If a man gain the whole world and lose his own soul, what shall he profit? Solomon realized in the end, without God, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He realized something, my brothers and my sisters, this morning. That without God, everything he accumulated amounted to zip. You bust your back if you want to for, the, for your employer. And I, I believe in the honest day's work. I understand that. But when you go over, above, and beyond. Listen, I got news for you. When you can't do it no more. 
They'll kick you to the curb, honey, and replace you with somebody else. Somebody asked me just this past week, preacher, ain't they about tired of hearing you down in Chadburn? Ain't about time for you to move? I said, well, about every seven years, God gives me a new crop. I keep good records for the church, you know, and I'll go back through my records. And about every seven years, God will weed out some, and he'll bring us in a new crop. Are y'all with me? Huh? I don't know what year I'm on yet, but it's probably getting close to it. Oh, God will weed some out, and he'll bring in some more. Y'all know what saved me is, don't you? Number of completion. Preacher said three sevens is 21. What are you telling me, preacher? Now, that made good sense. 21. I'm on my 20th year. I told you I was getting close. What are you telling me, preacher? Let's don't quit church on the Lord. Huh? Listen, can I, can I just slow down here and tell you, this ain't the perfect church. By no means. Because I'm your pastor and I got faults. You're the congregation that God has given me, and you got your faults. Because huh? some of you I wouldn't live with two days for I kicked you to the curb. No, I'm just kidding. I love all of you. And you wouldn't live with me for one day. Huh? I don't know how my wife's put up with me. This coming Tuesday will start 35 years of marriage. 18 years old when I met this young lady. Dated her for two months, and I said, or she said, you can ask her, it's the truth. She said, will you marry me? Well, she knew what she had. Woo! <laughs> Y'all believe that if you want to. She'll tell you different. She's in the nursery this morning. She's probably looking right now and that's that crazy man. I get him when I get home. I don't know how she's put up with me. I've drug her here and I've drug her there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pastoring in the mountains, pastoring down here. Wherever else God leads us and guides us, we'll take her there with us. But she's always stood with me. She's been my backbone. At times, I got to admit, I wanted to quit. What about you preachers? Anybody here? I wanted to quit. There's times I wanted to throw in the towel and say, man, this is enough here at Chapman. I, I can't do this anymore. I'll just go home. Then I thought, where's home? I ain't got one. That ain't good English. I'm just from the country. Huh? I don't have a home to go to. I sold everything I had when I went in the ministry. Gave it all up. Everything's gone. I don't own nothing. I live in a parsonage. That belongs to the church. I told my wife we was talking here not a while. I said, if something was to happen to me, you got 30 to 60 days to be out of the parsonage. You've got to have somewhere to go, honey. She said, I'm not worried about it. Don't you think we ought to look for a house? Nope. I'll get an apartment. I said, whatever you want to do, honey. But I'm telling you this morning, I know all of this stuff, the pros and the cons, but I ain't going to quit. You see, my, my state bishop didn't call me to do what I'm doing. The General Presbyterian of North Carolina didn't call me to do what I'm doing. The General Overseer didn't call me to do what I'm doing. But my God, Nehemiah said, He will prosper me. He will strengthen my hands for the work. and We will labor for Him until He calls us home. Come on, Sister Kay, I got to quit. I'm not done, but I'll just quit. What are you telling me, Pastor? I'm asking you this morning, is your mind made up? Huh? Can't stop now, preacher. I've I'm, I'm come too far in this thing now. Huh? Praise the Lord Jesus. It ain't time Hallelujah. to sit back and look at the situation and look at the problems and say, man, I just can't do this. Do like Nehemiah. Pull up your strap boots. Hallelujah. And get ready to fight the enemy. Let him know you're not going down without a fight. Huh? Did I play for Scotland High School? You better believe it. And I gave it everything I had every night I played. Amen. Hallelujah. 
won't quit now. I go to that gym over there in Whiteville four days a week if I can, depending on the situation, and I won't quit. My wife's been begging me to quit playing softball with the church here. She said, you're 53 now, honey. You need to retire. She's been on me hard. Y'all help me out, ball players. I said, honey, I ain't quitting until the church tells me I'm too old and I can't play no more. Or God says it's through. You're through, boy. I'm going to keep right on playing. In the race of life, I'm going to keep right on running. Until either, either I'm like Enoch and them boys translated or either I'm called up. I'm going to keep right on running, Brother Jody. You got your mind made up? Stand up over there, boy. Hallelujah. Brother Kim, got your mind made up? Stand over there, son. Brother Neely, got your mind made up? Stand up. Brother Jeffrey, got your mind made up? Anybody else in this building got your mind made up? You'll stand with me. Got my mind made up now, Lord. You say, preacher, you're giving the devil an open invitation to fight you tooth and nail. He's already doing it anyhow. Come on, somebody. I said he's already doing it anyhow. So why not get ready and fight him tooth and nail? I thought about this week. Brother B, I'm just going to walk right in the enemy's camp and I'm going to take back what the devil's taken from me. Some of you, he's taking your health. He's taking your families. He's taking your prosperity. He's taking even your dignity. Why don't you take it back today? Won't you take it back today? Huh? Run into a lady this week that used to sit right here on this second row. Run into her at Walmart. My wife needed something. She said, Don't worry about it, sis. I got you. Within an hour, she showed up at the house. Had just what my wife needed. Don't worry about it. You ain't got to buy it. And I thought to myself, ain't it time, young lady, that you take back what the devil stole from you? Some months ago, you sit right here and worship God with me, and now you've given up on God? And you're back out there in the world again because you allowed family and friends do you hear me, church? I'm trying to quit, but God said keep going right now. Some of you have allowed family, friends, jobs, and other things to come between you and God. Amen. And now you're further away from God than you've ever been in your life. God's saying today, it's time to come back home to me. It's time to come home. It's time to make up your mind. I'm not going to give an altar call, but I'm going to ask you a question. If you can answer this question, then you can come. If you've made up your mind this Sunday morning, preacher, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it with the Lord Jesus Christ. This altar is open for you. If that's you, this altar is open for you. It's open for you. Whosoever will. In this church, we just love everybody. We love people for who they are. Not about your past. Not about what your last name is. It's about your relationship with the Lord. It's about all you're ready to make it. Come on. Keep filling the clerk. Keep filling the altars. Come on. There's plenty of room at the cross. Plenty of room at the cross. If you're not physically able to come and kneel, just pray at your seat. Pray at your seat, but I'd love for you to come this morning. Come on, there's room. There's room. There's room. Pray, church. Make up your mind. 
Preacher, I, I'm going to make a promise to God this morning. I'm going to promise God I'm going to make this thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it, Lord. You're my only hope. You're my only help. <laughs> there is no salvation in any other. My, 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 my. Husbands and wife, yoke up together this morning. Yoke up together, husbands and wives. Make up your mind. We're going to make this marriage work. We're not going to let it die. We're not going to give in to the devil. We're not going to divorce. Make up your mind. Yoke up with your children. I'm not going to let you go to hell. If you go to hell, it's going to be over my prayers and my body. Make up your mind this Sunday morning. Do like Nehemiah. You stand for the Lord. He'll bring revival in the camp. He'll bring an anointing in the camp. He'll bring revival in the camp. There's an anointing flowing right now in this place. Mm. There's an anointing in the house. Jesus is 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 in the house. My God. Yoke up. Yoke up. Power and authority. My God. Yoke up with him. Yoke up with him, mamas and daddies. Yoke up with him, teenagers. Yoke up with him. 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 Mm, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yoke up with him. There's an anointing in the house. Jesus, the Lord of hosts, is here. He said, Mount up with me. Take upon your wings as an eagle. Run, don't you faint. Soar over the enemies of your soul. What about it this morning, church of the living God? Make up your mind. Can't stop now. Can't stop now, preacher. I'm going home. I'm going home. Somebody around here is doing some praying right now. Because you know that you know that you know that you've been slack. Now's the time to make up your mind. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs>